the intellectual center of the world was Baghdad. Why? The leaders of that state, the state of Baghdad, the leaders were open to whoever wanted to think stuff up, to Jews, to Christians, to Muslims to atheists, although they weren't called atheists, but they were more like doubters. Everybody was allowed in to exchange ideas. There were advances in farming, commerce, engineering, medicine, mathematics, navigation. Do you realize that two thirds of all the stars in the night sky that have names, have Arabic names? You ever wonder how that happened? The Arabs got naming rights to the stars 1,200 years ago because they charted them best and better than anybody before. If you do it first and best, you got the naming rights. There are other examples of this. The whole upper part of the periodic table of elements. There's Californium. Berkelium, we go on down the list. Fermium, these are, all, these are elements discovered here, pioneered here. We got to name them. Our internet, since we basically, we didn't invent the internet, but we pioneered it. The internet is really sort of our product. That's why our addresses, our internet address, except the government ones, don't have to say .us. Every other country, they got to talk what, about what country they're from. Dot .jp, dot .ge, dot, dot .cd, dot .c. Ours, we don't have to do it. In the same way in England, did you know in England, they make the only stamps, postage stamps, that don't say what country it's from? You ever seen a British stamp? It does not say England. It does not say Great Britain. It just gives the value because they invented the thing. So we have this naming rights going on. And what's this about the mathematics? What are our numerals called? What are they called? I heard someone say Roman numerals. Do you use Roman numerals, sir? <laughs> Do you realize Roman numerals don't have a zero? You can't balance your checkbook with Roman numerals, okay? Or you've been like preparing too many spreadsheets, you know, with Roman numeral one, two, three. What are our numerals called? Arabic numerals, thank you. Arabic numerals. They, they weren't invented there, but they were pioneered there. Algebra is an Arabic word. Algebra was basically invented in Baghdad over that 300 year period. The word algorithm is Arabic. So what happened? Where is it now? It's nowhere now, because in the year 1100, a Muslim cleric, based on his own reading of the Quran, declared that not only was his reading more holy than that of his fellow countrymen, but that in his reading, he declared that mathematics was the work of the devil. And being holier than thou, if you were not as holy as he, you were that you, there was peer pressure and then became pressure of the state. And as that shift took place, as well as some other factors, but this was paramount, the entire intellectual, intellectual foundation of that enterprise collapsed and it has not recovered since. Do you know more books were translated into Arabic in those 300 years than have been translated into Arabic since? And that was before the printing press. Do you realize of the billion and a half, two billion Muslims in the world, two have won the Nobel Prize in sciences? How many Jews are in the world? 12 million, million 15 million tops? We've got a third of the Nobel Prizes. There's a disconnect here between what was once a highly valued enterprise, the development of the human mind, and what happened afterwards. So warning stickers on biology books is a bad thing.
Or maybe we should just start a, a counter movement. Say, got to put warning stickers on the Bible. You know, not all these stories might be true. Or there are other doc. I mean, but they, of course, that's absurd. Nobody's going to say to do that. Especially not scientists. We got our own problems. You know. So what do we do about this, this fuzzy thinking? I'll tell you. Yes, NASA and I are the same age, almost to the day. So I feel NASA's joys. I feel their pains. I feel NASA's ambitions. I was a kid in the 1960s. No, I didn't want to go into space. I appreciated the vision laid down. We're going to the moon. No doubt about that. But I didn't want to actually become an astronaut. I might have, except that the astronauts and I didn't look alike. OK? They had those crew cuts, you know? At a time when the Broadway musical Hair was number one on Broadway, and these guys are getting put into space. I just, it was, it was a civil rights movement. I was just was not relating to the astronauts. Nothing against them. It's just you wanted to try to inspire me. It was not working. But I knew the power of that vision that was laid down. It was a power greater than even the power of teachers. Teachers are important. But if you're going to become an engineer, a scientist, you need a place to land on the other side of that process. That takes visions. I knew the power of vision. Some years later, in fact, while in graduate school, I was invited to write a, a, a chapter for history of the, 20, uh, the 20th century, the Columbia history of the 20th century. The chapter was called Paths to Discovery. And I stumbled on something that shocked me. Because I, th I asked myself, how do you do great things? How do you go to the moon? How do you go to Mars? How do you build the pyramids? How do you do these great, expensive, highly invested uh, activities out of cultures? So I said, well, let me make a list of all the drivers that allow people to do this. And I expected to make a whole book of all the ways people found to justify doing these great things. And there wasn't a whole book's worth. There were three, three drivers. No more, no less. We can list the, expensive thing, the most expensive things people have ever done. And we'd agree on what's in that list. The Apollo Project, the Manhattan Project, the pyramids, the Great Wall of China. Go down, we can just, cathedral building in Europe. Just do it. We'll agree what's on the list. And they'll have one of three things in common. War, economics, or the praise of deity or royalty. I wasn't able to find anything else. So I said to myself, if in America we want to go to Mars, and if that's going to be expensive, and if it doesn't satisfy one of these three criteria, we're not going to Mars. Unless we're going to somehow declare that we're some kind of new civilization in the world, with fundamentally different values than every other civilization that came before it. So there it was, I, I, I published it, it got it some play, and then there I am minding my own business, an academic, the manicured lawns of the Princeton campus, and the phone rings. It's the White House. This is 2000, sorry, 2001, spring. They say, we'd like you to join a commission to study the health of the aerospace industry. I said, what, what, what I, can you get somebody else to do that? I mean, I'm busy here. I, I, mean, I didn't know this was like a prestigious thing. I just thought it was like more stuff to like not have me do my research. And so I said like, you, you got the right guy? I mean, I don't, I don't know how to fly an airplane. And, and they said, no, 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 we know. We, 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 you're the right, but we know. We've read your writings. I, I said, okay, fine, fine, okay. How, I, will it take too much time? No, I said, fine, fine. But I'm still, 